on the oldest stars in the universe to explore the time soon after the Big Bang. So let's look at a few uh, uh, details that, that illustrate what we are actually doing. So 14 billion years ago, the Big Bang occurred. And uh, soon after that, which in astronomy terms means a few hundred million years later, the very first stars emerged. And they were rather massive, maybe 100 times the mass of the Sun. Yeah, this very uh, big mass meant that these guys had a really short lifetime. And what happened at the end of their lives? Well, big stars explode as gigantic supernova. What happened in those supernova explosions is that the elements, heavier than hydrogen and helium, so for example, iron and carbon and oxygen, they were generated in the course of the, uh, of the star during its lifetime. But in the supernova explosion, all this material got ejected out into space and the surrounding gas cloud got polluted and enriched just a little bit by all these elements that came out of the supernova explosion. So very early on in the, in the universe we had gas that consisted of hydrogen and helium and just a tiny little sprinkle of all these other elements. What happened then? Well, from this material, small stars could form. And those have maybe the mass of the Sun or less. And uh, small, stuff, small stars have a very long lifetime. They are really efficient. And so, as it turns out, a star that was born at this early time is still shining today because it has a lifetime that exceeds the current age of the universe. That's a really cool thing. And, um, well, they don't explode like the big stars. They just sort of cool off and become white dwarfs at some point. But that will be in the, uh, in the future, so we don't really need to worry about those right now. But the important thing is that it is those stars of the second generation that have these really long lifetimes that are still around. And it's those guys that we are trying to find with the world's biggest telescopes and a, a variety of resources. Uh, that is our goal. We want to find these little stars here that tell us about this supernova explosion, what came out of it, and how these elements were created for the very first time in their course. And um, all together, this helps us to understand how the first stars formed in the universe and also how the first galaxies formed, because of all of this happened in, in some first galaxy. So this is very exciting and brings us back to the time of all the firsts, first stars, first heavy elements, first galaxies, um, and so forth. So this is what we are trying to do here. Uh, so our work on, on finding these early stars uh, was already successful several times. We, uh, the last time in 2005, my team and I, we found a star where we think it's quite plausible that this was a second generation star. Because all the elements we measure in this object today are uh, few enough that they can be explained with just one of those first star explosions. But there was a little bit doubt here and there whether it was really just one supernova explosion, one of these first stars that uh, was responsible for what we are observing in here today. Uh, but now we have made a new discovery, which is very, very exciting, because it is very clear for the first time that really this object formed in a gas cloud that was enriched by only one supernova. So only one of those massive stars here. And, and that is absolutely fantastic because it, because it tells us all the details we need to know about 
the element production in this star and how it exploded and as it turns out uh, we find that these massive first explosions were actually not as energetic as we had thought previously. So that is exciting because it has actually a lot of ramifications for the chemical evolution and uh, the, uh, the evolution of stars and galaxies with time um, if, if these first stars weren't as energetic. Um, so that's just one example of what we can learn from finding second generation stars. And of course our quest is now to find more of these guys and we're using the Australian SkyMapper telescope to do that. And our early successes now are just so promising, we can't wait to get, uh, to get through more data and use uh, the, the biggest telescopes more often to find more of these ancient gems that are out there in the Milky Way even um, today. The question now of course is how old are these second generation stars? I, I've told you multiple times because we, we find the chemical composition of these stars, we can reconstruct in what kind of gas cloud these objects formed and what came out of the first stars. But we can't, unfortunately, really give you, give you an exact age estimate for the star. All we can do is we can ask uh, theorists and they can tell us a rough timeline here for the emergence of the very first stars, which is a few hundred million years. And then we think we know that the formation of these smaller stars didn't take all that long. So it's very plausible to assume that these early generation stars, these second generation stars, are maybe something like 13 billion years old, um, assuming that the universe is 13.8 billion years old. But um, unfortunately, we can't uh, pinpoint an, an exact de uh, age. It's, it's just this guess by means of looking at the chemical abundances and tracing back what came out of these first stars. So we have to live with that, but um, nevertheless, these guys really are very, very old. We find all these early generation stars, and that's of course very exciting. Now the question is, do they have names? I get asked all the, all the time what, what the star's name is. Do I get to name the stars? The answer is unfortunately no, but they have some telephone type numbers, <laughs> names, and uh, those are usually based on the coordinates. Uh, my previous record holder was called HE1327-2326, uh, which is based on this coordinates. And the new guy, the true second generation star, is called SM0313, which is a very short version of its coordinates. And SM, in this case, stands for SkyMapper. HE beforehand was the name of the Hamburg ESO survey. So um, we do acknowledge that a star was found as part of a large survey, but otherwise uh, it just gets a, a telephone number as its name.